Now just the claps. Here we go, Bob Squad. It's the mystery of the golden egg on the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Just want some time to distract the referee. And the baby face has your wrestler pinned. Then you get punched to the ring apron. And you realize all the trouble you're in when it's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Bada bada. Whoa. Yay. What is going on, Bob Squad? What are we talking about today? Could it be? Could it be? 11.22. I am recording this on 11.23, the 58th anniversary of the assassina assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Did you know that? Did you know that? How about that? And he was assassinated on a Friday after Thanksgiving. That's right, the first Black Friday the American holiday, well, the two-day American holiday on Thursday is Thanksgiving here in the States, for those of you who, who are international. Well, I guess we're all international. It's all relative. For those of you who do not live in America, this Thursday is the uh, Thanksgiving. It's a holiday. It's the most American holiday there is. We uh, eat embarrassing amounts of food. We shouldn't be proud of it. And we lay around, and for those of us who still feel like getting up, the next day, we go to Walmart and punch one another. How about that? USA. Anyway. Let's talk about Monday Night Raw. The nice thing about having Raw on a Monday and Thanksgiving on a Thursday is it usually spares us, at least on Raw, having everyone in catering dress up in pilgrim outfits or whatever and have a big food fight. Because they might do it on SmackDown, which is a Friday night. And the, the, chant, the important people won't do it. You're not going to see Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman dressed up like pilgrims uh, throwing stuffing at each other. But who knows? You're not going to see Charlotte end up with mashed potatoes in her face because she'd have to look silly for a second. Not going to happen. But this episode of Monday Night Raw is about an egg. It's about a golden egg. Remember Survivor Series, all the hype, all the hoopla. It's going to be bragging rights. The two brands are going to fight. We're going to pretend the third one doesn't exist. Hell, the audience does. The two brands are going to fight, and we're going to brag about who won. And we immediately go to, where is this egg? <laughs> oh, it's as dumb as it sounds. You start the show off with Hulk Hogan slam Andre the Giant. And then we proceed to have the worst, or the silliest, definitely the strangest five-minute opening of Monday Night Raw we've ever had in 30-something years. Was it 93? Was it 20, 28 years? 28 and a half years? What did we do? Well, we had a recap of the egg stuff, and then we have Vince McMahon yelling at Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville about his egg, and he tells them he's so upset that whoever turns in this egg they will receive a title match, a championship title match against Big E later tonight in a main event of Monday Night Raw. How do you know E didn't take the egg? Huh? Does he wrestle himself? But he didn't take the egg. And then he threatens Adam Pearce and Sony Deville with their jobs if they don't discover who took the golden egg. And they had to do this in Barclays in Brooklyn, in one of the, mo the more hardcore, cynical crowds. And we'll get to them. Then we proceed to have Randy Orton talk to an Irish guy. And then Riddle shows up in a Randy Orton costume. And starts talking like Randy Orton. Oh, boy. Haven't even had a match yet. And Riddle, dressed up like Randy Orton, would be the stupidest thing on this program, had the rest of it not been centered around a golden egg. Matt Riddle, dressed as Randy Orton, proceeds to wrestle Dolph Ziggler. Riddle wins using Randy Orton's RKO, and then RKO does the Bro Derek Riddle's finishing move. They did this gimmick like three months ago, each guy does the other one's finishing move. And people have pretty much forgotten what Riddle's finishing moves were since he's been in a tag team this whole time and using the RKO anyway. But then we... It was only 30 seconds, but man. The wrestlers all find out if they turn in the person 
who had who stole the egg or they find the egg itself and turn it in, they get a championship title match, right? So they are backstage and there is chaos. Our truth, who is not intelligent, thinks that a football he found is the egg and he was incorrect. Then he goes into a lady's locker room and you hear screams as though he saw nudity. Maybe our truth saw a bare bosom. We don't know. And uh, came back out and said the egg is not in there. So everyone's going crazy. They're flipping over tables. They're knocking things over. And I got to give credit to the back, uh, the backstage uh, wrestlers there. First of all, tons of wrestlers who should not have been in the skit. Rhea Ripley stood out. I mean, why is she here? Why are they making her act like a fool over finding the egg? Did she get a championship match at Becky Lynch? I hope that's not how they set up the match we eventually want to see. I don't know. Bianca Belair, her name was dropped several times. I didn't see her on a program unless she was uh, on one of the off-Hulu matches. She was the sole survivor at Survivor Series. I didn't see her once. What was the point? Survivor Series was even less meaningful than they promised. They promised it would be meaningless. And they over-delivered on how meaningless it was. You don't need to watch it. If you haven't seen it, you're fine. There's nothing that happened at Survivor Series that you need to see to follow through the programming this week. You're absolutely fine. Becky Lynch was the first not stupid thing we've seen in a half an hour into the Hulu edition. Not limited enough commercial interruption of the Hulu edition of this program. And Becky Lynch had a hard job because last night in the same building, in the Barclays Center in New York, in New York City, in Brooklyn, New York City, she had a hard task here because in front of the same people, she's pretty much the baby face against Charlotte. She's Everyone wants to see her beat Charlotte. Plus, she's the one who takes the heat and the one who makes the comeback. So she is the interim babyface, as I said. And now they're still going to be cheering her because they were cheering her last night. And so she has to gloat about that and then turn on them and piss them off. Because now she's with Liv Morgan. And they have to like Liv Morgan. Who they didn't hype up enough, enough is from Jersey, which is, you know, right over the, over the river there. But what the hell do they know? Their queen, Zelina, is from Queens, and they never bring that up. It's substitute. Okay. <laughs> so Becky Lynch turns on them, and she did a wonderful job of doing this, of getting all of them to boo her. She called out their hypocrisy, and people from Brooklyn are huge hypocrites, so that was fun and easy, and but made perfect sense. She did a wonderful job of getting them to boo her. And she's her, she's not interrupted by Liv's music. It just she just walks off, and I love that. Not every most promos, I, I believe, Inri should actually not be interrupted. So when they are, oh, something might happen here. Somebody's got something to say. But instead, later they did come face to face, but it was backstage with an Irish guy. Or was it the blonde lady? I wrote it down. We'll find out later. And then Seth Rollins shows up, who was coincidentally married to Becky Lynch, and Seth does some talking. He should not follow his wife when it comes to promos. But he gloated about being the number one sole survivor, and he's wearing a goofy outfit. And that one part of it, the new part of his song is catchy, the whoa, whoa, and everyone's singing it. But I think they're just saying it because they're bored. Like they, No one's into the new Seth Rollins, but uh, Seth wrestles Finn to a no contest. He jumps Finn Balor at the bell. And uh, oh, Finn Balor's music interrupted him because he was talking. There you go. And he jumps Finn at the bell and hits his finish twice and there's never any match. And then this happens. Of course, it was edited out on Hulu. There's no secret on Twitter. A drunken, stupid fan hops to railing a big dude and tackles uh, Spears' uh, Seth Rollins. And it looked like Seth kind of Hooked him in the front face lock, and security broke it up and dragged him out of there. And he was a big boy, and he was fighting it. So it took a lot of guys to haul his ass off. There's really no need for me to give the long version of this speech. If you jump the rail at a wrestling show, you deserve all of the violence in the world perpetrated upon you. I would have no guilt, and not blink, if that guy's eyeballs were taken out of his head and stomped, and he's left with blind and uh, empty eye sockets for the rest of his life. I couldn't care less. I have no sympathy. When you do something that stupid and that heinous and that cowardly, 
uh, Seth is in the middle of a, he's not looking, uh, he's in the middle of something, he's, he's performing on live TV, I hate the word performing, but yes, he's performing on live TV, he's, uh, he just did a big physical thing, he's, he's tired, and he doesn't see it coming, and the ones you don't see coming are always the ones that get you, and he gets tackled by this drunken asshole, and they hold him off, hopefully he went to jail, hopefully he doesn't get out soon, and I wish that guy nothing but pain, wherever you are, I hope, I hope, you only experience pain from here on in. That's like I feel the same way about the guy who jumped Bret Hart. Only pain. That's all that guy deserves the rest of his life. That's how I feel. Okay. Moving right along on this happy, fun wrestling podcast. <laughs> the roster. The entire roster is running around. Why are they running? I just wrote the roster is running. They must have been looking for the egg. I think they were running down the hallways or something. And Sami Zayn, who is on this show, I didn't even know that. He's in Vince McMahon's office. And I've never seen a Sami Zayn, to my knowledge, I've never seen a Sami Zayn, uh, Vince McMahon face off on TV before. So this was new and different. And if they've done it before, it's been a while. I don't know. So, Sammy is trying, is pretending he kind of knows and he doesn't really know. He just wants the title shot. He's being a schemer and everything else. And Vince McMahon tells, throws him out or tells him to go find the guy. I forget. I don't know. It was stupid. It's about the egg. And the announcers have been talking about the egg all night. And they're not going to stop. Because it's a Vince McMahon angle thing. Kevin Owens talks to a blonde lady. And then the same blonde lady is talking to Carmella and Zelina, the two cartoons. And then Carmella and Zelina, the two cartoons, the Cartoon Express, the Legion of Tunes. I'm trying, guys. Uh, the Bugs Bunny villains, they wrestle Nikki A.S.H. and Rhea Ripley for the t WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. Nikki A.S.H., Missing by a mile, trying to punch Zelina in the corner. Granted, Zelina's head barely reaches the top turnbuckle, but missing. Nikki was missing, and Corey Graves had to call it. He had to say she's missing some of those punches. She's missing all of them. He had to say she, um, Zelina's not tall enough. She's trying to. Nikki's trying to hit her on the top of the head, but not really. It's not quite working. Um, he had to focus. We saw it. And Corey probably got, somebody probably chastised him for calling it, but he had no choice. What the hell? He had to admit, like, hey, guys, it wasn't good. Uh, Carmella does the stupid mask gimmick, which no one cares about at all. It didn't get cheers. It didn't get boos. It got, uh, yeah, bruhs. And somehow, as Alina hits the finish on Nikki A.S.H., and we have new WWE Women Tag Team Championships. The Legion of Tunes. They won. They're like they're like what Tommy Lee Jones or thought that Two Face was like in Batman Forever. It was just so one sided, generic bad guy. It's kinda of what they are, unfortunately. Um New Women's Tag Team Championships, because somebody's big on them. And they were planting seeds. The two the two heels were saying in their interview with a blonde lady that, uh, hey, Rhea's the real powerhouse, or Rhea's the one in that team, and she's, Nikki is riding the coattails of Rhea is what they're trying to say. And they showed Rhea with some frustration with Nikki, uh, like jawing at her a little bit when they were both laying there. On the, on the uh, by the ring, Abrams are as part of the ring after the tag team championships. So I don't know if they're going to have. Uh, it looks like that they're they're planting seeds already to get Rhea and Nikki apart. Doesn't mean Rhea turns on Nikki. Turn Rhea heel. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea personally. You're damned if you, damned if you don't. Because now we're in a situation where as we keep Rhea babyface and build her up again, well, that screws Bianca. 
because it's the women's division, so we could only have one heel and one face going for the title at one time. No one else can have an issue. Which is bad. That to stop the, the the women's division is always weakest when they do that. There needs to be one non title issue, at least. So each show, each of the main two shows should have two women issues going on. One title, one not for the title. Gives everybody give them a little more something to do. Uh, so where do we go from here? Let's say we turn Rhea heel. Let's do the opposite. Okay. So Rhea's going to beat Nikki like in a first match. That's not going to be much of a feud. I mean, we can kind of see where the bloom is off the rose for Nikki A.S.H. Sorry. But bloom's off the rose. It's over. Uh, so Rhea's going to beat her in one match. And then what does Rhea do? Nothing. She's going to be on the push to nowhere because the top female heel is Becky. So Rhea's gonna have she's gonna she's gonna have the Omos problem. Oh, where was Omos on this show, by the way? Was he on was he on a non Hulu segment? I don't know. I didn't see him once on this after winning that battle royal. After all those other guys had to look foolish for him to win. Yeah. Wow. Survivor series it, it felt like a Saudi Arabia show in Brooklyn. Like it, it's that meaningless. It's it's really just a, a one one off glorified house show. It's just spectacle. Um it's a big like what if but with wrestling, which is already a big what if. And what if we had another Vince McMahon egg segment? Because we do. Vince McMahon and Sami Zayn and Austin Theory now are together. Austin Theory returns the egg. He says he took it to take selfies with, and then he got scared and something stupid. And Vince McMahon admired him and rewarded him with the championship match, and then he told Sami Zayn no one likes a snitch. So Vince McMahon rewarded the guy who stole his $100 million egg that The Rock gave him. The Rock has the Rock has no knowledge of this, by the way. Um, then Domino, Dominic. Dominic and Rey Mysterio are in a locker room. And then they're going to wrestle Bobby Lashley in a handicap match, which they do. But MVP cuts a promo first and tells Rey he wants to he could have sex with his wife. Well, he tells Ray, MVP tells Ray that MVP would be willing to have sex with Ray's wife if they do not win the match. I'm not kidding. That's what was implied. And then no one has sex with Ray Mysterio's wife, but the Mysterios do eventually lose to Bobby Lashley in a differently disabled adults match. Okay? It's not a handicap match. It's a differently disabled adults match. I haven't had one of those in a while because Drew McIntyre hasn't been champion in a while. He did that the entire time he was there. Wrestle two guys in a differently disabled adults match, and an Irish guy is talking to Big E, and then an Irish guy is really, he must be exhausted, he's running all over the place, because now he's talking to Liv Morgan, and Liv Morgan is interrupted by Becky Lynch, hey, they're face-to-face -face backstage, not in front of 15,000 screaming people, but in front of an Irish guy, and then Liv starts to almost cry, and Becky teases her, and Becky was so funny here, well, fun, she was so much fun, she was just... Just pushing all the buttons, just needling Liv. Are you going to cry? Are you going to cry? But it's believable what Becky does. And Liv gives her either a slap or a punch. I really couldn't tell. But that's good because if Liv... I'm surprised they didn't just have Liv walk away and cry. Like if, when Stephanie McMahon used to emasculate everybody. So no one gets over. Speaking of Stephanie McMahon, she still works there. Who knew? She still works there. And she has a commercial... She's bowling in the Special Olympics, and I'm sure that uh, she insisted on winning and didn't put anyone over. So, Stephanie McMahon, after a differently disabled adults match, Stephanie McMahon defeated some differently uh, disabled adults, uh, differently abled adults in the Special Olympics in bowling. So, developmentally challenged people played a... Uh, a sporting event against a sporting event against Stephanie McMahon, and she defeated them. She crushed them to show them she's powerful, I think. And then an Irish guy is back, and he's talking to Austin Theory. And then Big E wrestles Austin Theory in the main event, the WWE Raw for November twenty second, two thousand one on the Who. Sorry, on the Who edition. And Seth Rollins is a ringside for no reason. Kevin Owens shows up in the middle of the match for no reason. They play his music so he can walk out to a match he's not in. These stupid little things. Is that worse than a run-in? Having music for a run-in? 
having music for you walking out to a match you're not in? Because you would think for maybe for a run-in, you could bully the music guy. Like, hey, play my music. But why would they even do that if a championship match was going on? I could. I don't know. Seth and Kevin Owens start fighting each other. The match was okay. Austin Theory did this one thing I loved. So small and so smart. Big E's given him, uh, he does the two overhead suplexes, I think. And then the one kind of side one Yokozuna used to do. And then he, he plants you right in the middle and he runs over you twice and does his splash or whatever the hell. But Big E didn't plant him quite in the middle. So Austin uh, just rolls over. Just rolls over twice. Well, he's on his back. He rolls over once to his stomach and then once to his back again. So yeah, he just rolls over in a dead center. And I, you can see the look on E's face like, sweet. He just hooked me up. Because basically it's his big move in the middle of the ring. Um, and it's those things. That's probably one of the many reasons people just love this kid. He's a young, good-looking kid. I mean, he's... I don't know if he's that charismatic. He's, But I wouldn't call it the fake charisma that The Miz has or that uh, Egon Page guy has in AEW. That's fake charisma. That's just, look at me, I got charisma, I got charisma, look at me. No, you don't. You don't. That's, that's fake. Um... So I don't think Austin Theory has the fake charisma problem. He's he's a good goof, and that will have to change at some point. But for now, it's fine. He does a, he does a lot of little things really well, and that's one of them. He's a good wrestler. He's got cool moves and everything, blah, blah, blah. But uh, those things, though, because he just made the champ look good. And you can see he looked down, and he knew it, too. He's like, oh, fuck yeah. Um... Anyway, there's a lot of distractions, and then Austin Theory walks into the champion's finish. One, two, three, Big E wins. That's exactly what should have happened. That's what did happen. Very good, very good, very good. And then Big E draws with Seth and Kevin Owens, and it looks like they're setting up. I guess the next pay-per-view is on Saturday, January 1st of 2022. I would not be surprised if the Raw main event is clearly a three-way between those three. Except for one thing. It's like five weeks away. It's like a little... It's a little far away to be dragging that out just for this stupid three-way. So, I don't know how many more combinations they can have. I think it's easier to drag out Big E versus Seth than it is to drag out the triple threat. But then what was the point of doing all this with Owens? I don't really know. Yeah, it's not my problem, really. I don't work there. I feel sorry for any son of a bitch that does. <laughs> <laughs> well, Vince McMahon has his egg, and everybody scrambled all over the place to find <laughs> You get it. Sorry, I guess the yoke's on you. Ah, I did it again. Okay, uh, no more egg puns. Uh, I'm going to let you go now. <laughs> I'm the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Ba-da-ba-da. -ba -da.